G'day, it's Stephen from Wollstone Web Design here. I wanted to take some time to make this video to explain some of the challenges and the solutions to those challenges that I came across since I've started working with Laravel. Now, Laravel, I've kind of fallen in love with this with this framework. It is so simple to use. It's really easy to get a fully featured application up and running really quickly and the documentation is fantastic as well I just find it really really good to really really easy to use but the issue that I have is that a lot of the documentation and tutorials that you find online regarding deployment all talk about using SSH, SSHing into a server and running PHP artisan commands against the server and, and setting up the environment via SSH or you can go and, and, and use a, a Laravel service as well. I don't have access to that on my on the host that I'm using for this particular Laravel application. I'm using a shared host and so the only real access that I have to that server is via FTP. So what I needed to do is work out a way to get my local development environment um, moved up to the shared host in the location that I need it to be in such a way, in such a structure, so that that application will work on that shared host. So I thought I would go through the process of um, the, the discovery and the learning that I had to go through to make all of that work for me. So first of all, let's have a look at our folder structure. So this is the development environment for the application that I'm working on locally. So you'll notice all of these files, it's a, it's a Laravel application, so these folders will all be familiar to you. The couple of folders, a couple of files here that I want you to take notice of. This .env file, this is kind of the, inv the the environment settings for the application. So the stuff that you have, or the, the configuration that you have in this .env file to run locally is going to be different to what you will want to run in production. So what I've done is I've created a .v .env.production file and that essentially is a copy of this but it has all of the uh, the keys and the usernames and passwords and everything that will be needed in production. Okay, so actually let's go back, let's go to code and have a look at that. So this is our env file, so obviously we're running locally, this is our local URL, this is our local database and username and password and this is all going to be different on the server. Uh, there's also email set up and I'm using Mailgun, You'll need to, we'll need to make sure that usernames and passwords are in there and I've got a, PA, a, um, a PayPal uh, integration uh, with my application as well. So I'll need to run locally in my sandbox but then when I go live I'll need to run, I'll need to pass the live configuration up. And also the configuration for um, for PayPal is done here in another PayPal file and so this will need to be changed to um, to live from sandbox to live. I've actually just got that running in live mode all the time at the moment because I've finished the development that I need to do for PayPal. Um, but if you did want to have two instances of, of a, a sandbox version and a live version, you would do the same thing here with this paypal.php. You'd create a paypal.php.production. And the reason that we do that is if I go to the batch file that I've created, when I am getting ready to push my changes to the server, my batch file will go through and it will look for the, the env file, it'll rename the current env file to env.dev and then it will rename the env.production to .env. So we're essentially we're switching those over. So that means that the .production will actually become our .env file. And then here what I'm doing is I'm changing directories into the course manager just to make sure that say for example if my um, my command prompt was on, um, on the D drive or something, I would make sure that I would be in the right folder. I've just got an echo there. Then what I'm doing is I'm deleting some cache files. Um, I'm 
and I'm deleting the Laravel log files as well. And that what that does is that stops any local cache that I have being pushed up to the server and also any just clearing any of the logs as well. And these two zip files are the zip files that we're going to create later on down down here. So what I do is I just tidy them up and delete them before we go ahead and zip up our contents. So let's go back to our folder. This is the structure that we have locally within our development environment and, and this just naturally works because we run it under the artisan serve web server so it knows how to handle all of this. But when we push it to the server we need to push it up in such a and structure it in such a way so that the public files are, the, are, are in the root of the folder for our domain name and then all of the Laravel stuff the the engine and, uh, and all of the routes and the views and all that sort of thing that's all in a single place but structured in such a way so that Laravel knows where it is and it knows um, it so that it can run it so what I what I do is say this is the root of our folder where our website is running I create a folder in here and I call it Laravel and then what I do so the structure the, the finished structure will be everything here in this public folder will be here in the root and then everything else except that and obviously git files and, and, and other things and we'll go through that in a moment everything else that's in this folder will go into that Laravel folder and then what we need to do is we need to tell Laravel that it needs to look in that Laravel folder for all of the things that it needs for the application to run and we do that through under the public folder in the index.php we have our require um, commands here and at the moment that's looking in this the root of this folder here but if you see here we have an index.php.production as well so if we look at this file and we look at the difference here the only difference is I've added this Laravel folder if we can see the difference so the the folder structure is slightly different and I've added that Laravel file in so if we go back to our batch file what we're going to do is I'm using 7-zip so I because I'm in in the root of our application here I just say 7-zip make an archive called laravel.zip and put everything in it except the stuff that's in this public folder and anything that starts with .git so I don't want any of my um, git configuration files and that will create me a file uh, a zip file called laravel.zip and then I cd into the public folder and I do a similar renaming as what I did up here I rename index.php to index.php.dev so we're sort of we're archiving that off so that it's out of the way and then we rename the production version of that index.php to index.php so that will now become our main index.php in the production application and then we do the similar thing again 7-zip create an archive and we call it public.zip and we put it a folder up so both the Laravel zip and the public zip are both in the same location and then once that's done then we revert those files that we renamed so we're going to take the index.php and make it .production again and then make the index.php.dev back to index.php and similarly with our env files we revert them back and then here I run an npm run dev so it runs the npm script if we look in our package.json uh, yeah under these scripts here so this here it's essentially running npm run development because if we go back to our batch file 
at the top here, I don't run these as part of the batch file, I run these manually. So I run a composer run script production deploy, which we'll, we'll cover that in a second, and then I, I run the npm run production. So that runs all of the webpack build and, and all of the concatenation and minification and everything that needs to needs to be run for a production application to work. So this composer run script production deploy, this is a script that I've created in the composer.json file. I've created this script here called production-deploy. And what I do is I run a whole heap of artisan commands to clear out the cache, to clear out the routes, clear the configuration, all that kind of thing, just to make sure that I don't have any of my development uh, configuration and settings and cache and everything still um, still around when I push it up to the server. So back to our batch file, we'll run these manually and then start the batch file off which renames our files, goes into the right folder, cleans up any old stuff that we don't want anymore, creates a Laravel zip, renames these files, creates a public zip, reverts the files back and reverts our NPM environment back to development as well. So then what that's going to give us is in the root of here we're going to have a laravel.zip and a public.zip. Then what I do is I FTP those files up to my server. So let's pretend that's what this is here. So I put the public, I FTP the F, um, the public.zip file here into this folder. I FTP the laravel.zip folder uh, zip into this folder, and then I unzip the file, the laravel.zip in here, unzip the public.zip in here, and then the application works because I've got different configurations in my different files. If we go back to this again, our env file. So this is our development environment, whereas our production environment is production, and it's got it'll have all of the, the it'll have the server database username and password in that, as opposed to the local ones here. So I hope that helps. If anyone who might be having a similar problem to what I have, uh, feel free to add some comments, ask me any questions. I'm happy to share this batch file with you. It's a bit of a work in progress. I'm continuing to modify things as I come across things, but I hope that's helped and good luck to you all.